Hello and welcome back to Onto the Ball, where we're gathering here for the funeral of a competitive Liverpool football club. Thanks for joining us. Um, to join me at the wake is Travis Morgan and James Obi. It's been a crazy couple of days in our group chat. Uh, and I'm not even sure. I'm, <laughs> I'm not even sure how this stream's going to go. So please, guys, if you like what you see, <laughs> don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Because at the end of this stream, it could be the last ever onto the ball. Honestly, <laughs> um, I can't even guarantee me and Ob won't fall out because <laughs> I'm so furious with everything that's going on with Liverpool Football Club at the minute. I'm not sure if OB sees it the same as me. I don't know if he'll think you're being irrational, Scott. I don't know if you think you're going over the top. I don't know if Travis is going to echo what he's been writing on Twitter for the last 48 hours, or if he'll put his professional head on and give a levelled view. I just don't know what's going to happen. Just, if we're still <laughs> here for the next video, hit like and subscribe. There might be another video, and this might be the last ever one. Travis, OB, I don't care how your weekends were. Let's get straight onto <laughs> the ball. Jamie fucking Carragher. I'm absolutely livid with his comments. Furious. I'll ask Obi to come in with his thoughts in a minute, but I just couldn't I couldn't believe what I was watching yesterday on Sky Sports. I kept reading it over and over today on, on Twitter and on the Sky Sports. I do not blame FSG at all. How he can make them comments. What he's done there is he's hung Jurgen Klopp out to dry. He's basically diminished Jurgen Klopp's efforts in the last seven years. He's basically took what he can from him, enjoyed it. He's on video with Jordan Henderson popping the champagne. Go on, Jordan, lad, when we won the league. So he's there for all the good times. And then when it's turning bad now, he's basically turned on Jurgen Klopp and the the staff, of it, as he called it. So he said that we're the club that's lauded for the way we operate. The perfect model, I think he said. Buy low, sell high, live within your means. Don't be crazy spending money you haven't got. Everyone else copies this model. I wonder if he'd still be saying that if Jurgen Klopp hadn't won everything there was to win. I wonder if he'd still be saying that if we were 7th, 8th in the league. And he'd be like, yeah, of course the 7th, 8th in the league. You know, Jurgen Klopp's not a miracle worker. He only spends <clears throat> 30 million net a year. And that's probably the 15th highest in the league in the last seven years. Um, you know, what can you do? But what's happened is Jurgen Klopp has spoiled us fans. He's spoiled Jamie Carragher with everything he's achieved. And now when the going gets tough, he says that Jurgen Klopp got it wrong last summer when he missed out on Chua many. Jurgen and his staff, he keeps saying his staff, I don't know if he's trying to hang someone out to dry. Jurgen and his staff decided not to get a different midfielder and buy Nunez instead and this is the thing like Jurgen Klopp to coin Trav's phrase turns water to wine and has done for seven years on this net spend it really is incredible it's I put it in the group the other day it doesn't I don't care how it's being done we all just sit back and enjoy it being done and marvel at his skill set and winning these trophies um and you don't need to describe how he does it no one knows the guy's a genius he's in the top three managers in the world as most people will say but now the margin for error when you've got a 30 million pound net spend is so tiny. It's tiny. As soon as it looks like he potentially has Captain Hindsight, Jamie Carragher, potentially it was the wrong move to bring in Nunes instead of a midfielder, especially when we're linked with someone like Mateus Nunes, uh, who was available for, what was it, 45 million. We decided not to pursue him and bought Nunes instead now he's hung the transfer committee the sporting director Jurgen Klopp himself and maybe not being strong enough for saying I don't care if you guys recommend Darwin Nunes I want a midfield he's hung him out to dry 
and basically abandoned him just when things are getting tough. To say that he doesn't blame FSG for this at all, it, it just it absolutely stinks. When you look across at Man United, everyone's singing Ten Hag's praises at the minute. Oh, he's, he's, he's been the right appointment. He's made a flying start. He spent £250 million. He's brought in Anthony at £80 million to replace an £80 million dud in Jadon Sancho. No one says anything. He's brought in £90 million Martinez to replace £85 million Harry Maguire. No one says anything. But as soon as Jurgen Klopp is trying to work his £30 million net spend to the best he can, making the decision... To not pursue a different midfielder once he missed out on Chuameni, which has worked for him in the past, and everyone sings his praises. He only wanted Van Dyke, and he he was patient. He he only wanted him, and it was the right thing to do. Now there's no trust there. He's abandoned him, threw him under the bus, and Captain Hindsight said he should have signed a midfielder instead. And that's where it all it just becomes laughable. If we'd have signed Mateus Nunes instead. Uh, instead of him going to Wolves, with the injuries we had, what would the front three have been, OB? It could have been Elliot on the left, Oxley chamberlain in the centre, and Salah on the right. We'd be scoring even less goals than we are now. And the narrative then from Jamie Carragher and every other pundit would be, they're short up front. And then what, would they have slagged off FSG then? Jurgen Klopp, he's brought in the midfielder. He was only allowed one because that's all he can afford. He needed probably two or three midfielders, but he also needed reinforcements up front. Mane left. You know, Mane left and he didn't replace him. Can you imagine how easy it is to be a pundit at times like this when all you can do is look back at hindsight and then <laughs> to have it from Jamie Carragher of all people, basically... To back up FSG now is basically saying, I don't care about competing anymore because we just don't spend money we haven't got. The only way you can look past this for me is that FSG decided five years ago we're not going to compete anymore. We're going to spend that $250 million on the... Uh, the main stand, and now we're going to spend another $150 million on the Anfield Road end. The only way that that would have worked was to spend that money on the squad and then carry on competing. If they'd have spent that money on the squad and Jurgen Klopp was still having the same season he's having now and the pundits would say, you know, he spent $400 million in the last four years. You know, like, like still not as much as Man United or Man City or Chelsea. But then you could say, yeah, do you know what? He's got a point. I could not believe my ears last night. I'm furious. I tagged Jamie Carragher in a Twitter post. I'd love him to reply. I'd love him to come on here one day. It just makes absolutely no sense at all. OB. <laughs> How do I follow on from that rant? Um, right, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not going to focus on Jamie Carragher. Jamie Carragher can have Jamie Carragher's opinion. All I will say is two points on that. One, if I remember rightly, Jamie Carragher didn't call out Hicks and Gillette as well. That's all I'll say. So he he'll, he'll toe the line of a club. Okay. The second point in the FSG years, I'm going to read out some stats for you. Right. First two seasons of the Kenny Dagleish. I love Six. some Rafa, some Rafa facts. Yeah, yeah yes. here we go. We're in the facts. Dagleish, first two seasons, sixth first season of FSG, eighth for second. Rogers, seventh, second, and sixth. Okay. Klopp, eighth, then fourth, fourth, second, first, third. The uplift is ridiculous. I know who I put that down to. And I know, I think people are back in the wrong horse. I really do. To call out Klopp on that level of uplift as a club, gone from being someone who might get into the top four if we're lucky, if we have a good season, to someone who is consistent top four, and to drop off for six months or whatever, and then suddenly everybody turn on the manager. Absolutely ridiculous. Not having it, not accepting it. He can have a whole season. If he's rebuilding, he come back, 
They could be brilliant again next year. We all believe that's possible. But if we don't back him as a manager, he might walk. And and that is the, that's the point that Trav's been talking about this. I've been like, it won't happen, it won't happen, it won't happen. But if the if the fans don't back him, he could go, I've, I feel like I've lost the fans and I don't want him to feel like that. So 100%, Jurgen Klopp, my man, keep going, everything else. Right. OB, he, he should walk. He should no, walk. No, no, Scott. He Scott, should. No. He no, should he walk. shouldn't. He deserves no, he better shouldn't. than this. Yeah, but he, you know, like, my, my loyalty ultimately is to Liverpool Football Club and he's the best manager for the job. Okay? Yeah, but under these owners, it's futile. It's pointless. But Jamie yeah, Carragher, I know I know you said I don't want to go to Jamie Carragher, but him yesterday should have been... It's been seven years. He hasn't got the money in the backing to revitalise and refresh this squad. It's only natural nature that the squad has aged and he's struggling to get a song out of them now. That was going to be the case no matter who the manager is no matter whether they brought one midfielder or one forward it's going to be a natural drop off that's inevitable and it's nothing to do with Jurgen Klopp or his staff if you don't spend money you will not compete that should have been his tagline last night and I can't believe it's anything other than that but he, he won't he won't ever pull anybody out to dry, will he? He but won't why? do that. He's, he's hung Klopp but, and the staff out to dry, whoever he's getting at then. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of it. I don't know the politics of what's going on there. I'm not really, if I'm being totally candid, I'm not 100% bothered by what's going on with people's opinions around this is what's going on and Jamie Carragher talking on Sky Sports. Because ultimately... What's going to turn things round is the performances on the park. Now, for me, and I was thinking about this, and I agree that we, we have had a lack of investment, we haven't revitalised certain areas. Now, the reasons behind that, I think, lay more. And you know, you know what camp I'm in. But on, honestly, the team that are being put out week in, week out, are capable of doing better than they're doing yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah I, agree. So let's, I agree. Let's let's not. Let's not focus on Jamie Carragher because Jamie Carragher can't affect that football club right now. He doesn't have any impact. So the people who can affect the football club are the owners to a certain extent, who you know my opinion on. I think they have they've done what they've had to do. They've obviously they're great businessmen. They took a lot of money out of the club, um, reinvested it, and made a load of money. And when they sell, they're going to make a load of money. That's great business. And their American owners have got no. They've got no care about the feelings of a, a, a support that are across the pond. They don't care. Yeah, oh, yeah. Really. They, oh, they'll I have agree. very little care. It'll be it's an investment opportunity and they're businessmen. Okay, so the people who can affect it, players on the pitch, make me furious. More more than I'm sure Joe, J- Jamie Carragher's making you furious. When I see lack of effort, Scott, I can't handle it. I yeah, can handle it. There must be a reason for it. There must be a reason. For me, I don't no matter what the reason is, don't get it. Because ultimately, I love that club. And just like you, I love it. And I love when I watch a passionate Liverpool team put everything in. Do you know what? Even when they lose. So if they, they, they try their best and they lose, don't get me wrong, I'm gutted. I think to myself, that was passion. Lost to the better team. And the amount of times that's happened over the last 20, 30 years is absolutely enormous. It's happened a load of times. We've come up short in certain games. I'll give you an example. Champions League final last season. We put a lot of effort in. Just didn't quite get it over the line. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you think to yourself, right, okay, put it in. Had some big chances. A couple of people probably didn't perform, but it wasn't lack of effort. It was just, it didn't work out on the day. At the top level, um, Real Madrid played a fantastic game. Ancelotti set his team up well, and the better team won. Okay, I can live with it. I can handle it. What I can't handle is getting knocked over 3 nil again and again and again away from home by teams that we should be putting the effort in against. Now, if, if they get a lucky win against this, and, and Trav's been there as well, where these, you go to these teams and they beat you. You know what I mean? And, and you think to yourself, OK, that's annoying. We shouldn't be losing a team like that. But the difference was the lack of effort. Yeah, they steamrolled us. having that. And that, and that, and, and that. But that's not on. That's not on FSG. That's not on Klopp. That's on them players on the park, 
got. And that's where my focus is. Some of these players aren't putting it in. And I don't care what the reasons are. They need to start putting the effort in because that is unacceptable in my view. And that's Listen, where I am with it, more than anything else. Before I bring Trav in, because he's looking like a mannequin or he's just shell-shocked <laughs> that man. opening, the opening 10 minutes. But just man, to tee man, Travis man. up, we love a yeah. prediction on onto the ball. We always do the score predictions, but everyone's looking at our fixtures, OB and Travis, in the next five, six games, thinking like Liverpool on paper are in even deeper trouble. But... This will be a test, this will be, OB. We'll raise it against Everton. We'll raise it against Newcastle. We'll raise it against Real Madrid. And we'll raise it against Man United. Pride will 100%. kick in. And if 100%. we do, that is going to prove that these players that have don't look like they've been trying a leg have on purpose took their foot off the gas and are not going full throttle. Trav... Take it away. Tell me about what, what was your first mm. thinking, feeling when you seen Jamie Carragher's statement. Let's call it a statement. Yeah. Like, right. Obviously, I've been gassing in the group chat and all that and, and all that jazz. And we've, we've had our little fallouts over it and all that. But <laughs> look, when I, when I put the video in, I liked a lot of the context of it because there's been points which I've sort of raised in it which were similar. I think what Carrig is trying to say is not, I don't know, I think he might have worded some of it wrong in terms of FSG aren't to blame at all for what's happening. I don't think he's making them blameless for the whole scenario. My actual think, thoughts are is that with the injuries you've got, the drop-off shouldn't be as big as it is. That's what I think he's trying to say. Like, with you know you've got Diaz out, you know you've got Jota out, you know you've got Van Dijk out, you know you've got a couple of others out, Bobby Firmino and stuff. And I think what he's saying is, if everyone was fit, you wouldn't be tense. But he's still saying it's not an excuse for the level of performances that we're seeing on the pitch. And the reason I predicted you to win against Wolves was because they're so bad. Like, They've scored 12 goals all season. All season. Do you know what I mean? And then they go and put three past you. That's a fifth of their goals all season in one match against you. Like, it, it's so bad. And from my, from my perspective, look, when, when we've been on these podcasts, we spoke about Klopp, we spoke about the Liverpool situation at length a lot of times. Now, I think you two have been very confident about the fact that it's just a blip in his tenure, he's been there seven and a half years. This is a six-month blip and everything will be not hunky-dory next season, but Klopp will be back. There'll be a few players that will go. You'll bring some players in and everything will be, so to speak, back to normal. No, this I don't think first, that. I don't think well, that. Well, this is the first... I'm, this is what I'm elaborating on. This is the first time I've actually seen you two not be so confident that that situation is going to happen because, like... We, we've been quite up in the air about the, the owners and who the owners are going to be. We've never really, well, you two more so than myself, have never really questioned whether we think Klopp's going to stay under the conditions. I think the diehard fans who aren't on Twitter all the time, like me, who seriously like support the club and stuff, they're still backing Klopp, they still want Klopp in. There are some sections now who are swaying, not necessarily towards the Klopp out, but I think there's more questions being asked of Klopp and the staff now than they were because you can't just keep up. Regardless of what's going to happen in the summer, regardless of who you're going to bring in, it's February. You can't just keep getting beat the way you're getting beat from now until May and dropping points so easily. And it's acceptable. You're a huge club. You're in the bracket with Man United. You're in the bracket with City. You're in the bracket with Arsenal. Do you know what I mean? All those other clubs, if their club's attempt, I know the manager's got time, credit in the bank for what he's done for, compared to what the other managers are. But, like, there's got to be a cut-off point. Not a cut-off point where I mean sack. What I'm saying is that you have to start looking like these performances look like there's something that lies beneath. That's what it looks like to me. Do you know what I mean? It is. It's a lack there's of effort that, and desire. You can see it. There's a lack of it. effort. There's a lack of confidence. There's a lack of running. There's a lack of cohesion and like I watched match of the day as well and, and it was Paul Merson sorry after the after the game because he did the soccer Saturday did the full Liverpool game and he's like 
He even said it was the first time he saw Klopp in the dugout after the game when he just looked defeated. He looked beaten like he didn't know. And he's coming out in his press conferences saying he's he's got no answers. Like, I'm not saying he's running out of time, but he must even be at a loss. He's tried different combinations now. And it's just like getting to that point where it's just like, what are you going to do from now till May? Like, like you said, it could get really bad if you lose the next few obviously Everton you've got coming up you've got United you've got City in this time it could get really ugly if if you don't win a lot of those games I can remember different scale obviously different level of manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer totally in a different planet to to um, Jurgen Klopp but like sometimes it can just snowball you lose a game then you just keep losing getting blasted away at Watford Watford were bottom of the league couldn't score they put four past us when he got sacked it's just it can happen when the confidence goes and things just go in your side it's sometimes hard to get yourself for that rut you need a big couple of results like knocking Real Madrid out could we galvanize the whole season and like you said you just need a couple of players back now but like you said it starts on the pitch like i know you're aggrieved about what carrig is saying and stuff and to be honest added- honestly i'm i've yeah. give up i've told you probably about two months ago now if we were a dog would be putting a bullet through our head and just end the season put the dead dog down um i'm not even thinking about this season it's written off finish 10th whatever whatever when you say like get to the summer, you know, bring in some players and you you think you'll go again. Well, we won't. We haven't got any money. We're skint. If we somehow manage to get the Bellingham deal over the line, paying instalments over the next five years, fair play to FSG, fair play to Jurgen Klopp getting the player he wants, but it will be nowhere near enough. Nowhere near enough. So it's new owners or bust. But the point is, I just don't get this confidence. I know OB said it before, the low on confidence. You're a footballer. You're a professional footballer. You've got 10 teammates around you. Pull together. Keep it tight at the back and, and just compete. Become hard to beat first first off. But we're still doing that thing where it's four attackers against four defenders. The midfield are nowhere. Yeah. Thiago is and, had... And, and this is my point. Like This, this is what like makes me revert back to that he, he has got... A a little bit of a falling out with a couple of the boys in the dressing room because I know everyone's saying Fabinho is finished, but he shouldn't be finished. He's 29, do you know what I mean? He should be in his prime now. He's been your best holding midfielder since he's come to the club. Why is he not in the team? I know Badge Badge has come in and done very well, but how is Fabinho fell off this cliff this quick? How is he not in your team? How is he not an integral part of the team still? I think he's he's fell out with Jurgen Klopp myself uh, i listened to another podcast the anfield rap today and they said when you're at the game for a good six months jürgen klopp is screaming at fabinho every game basically he doesn't think he's good enough he's not following instructions he's not playing well enough so i mean it's obvious there's a fallout there now he wasn't even in the squad um on saturday he mm. tried to get sent off against Brighton, I'm sure of it. He t- he lunged to break the guy's ankle and then invited the ref to, to send him off with all the theatrics. But, oh, I can't believe I've done that. Send me off, ref. There's absolutely a fallout there. But one of the worst uh, points of Saturday for me, OB, I, I don't know if you watched the game live or you just seen it on Match of the Day, was when we went 2-0 down and Jurgen Klopp turned around remonstrating to Henderson and Milner like there was two coaches and he was like, uh, uh, and then you just seen the mouth, unbelievable. I'd love a penny for their thoughts. I mean, how's that conversation even that. going? Because yeah. they must be like, you put Cater in there, you put Bajsetic in there, Thiago's in there, you're resting us two, and now you turn around appealing to us. Like, I don't even know how that conversation would go. No, it's a like weird if you if you if you're that. appealing to Hendo and Milner, get them on the pitch. Yeah, it's a weird dynamic, and that again, that's another sign to think like it. Like, does he care about this current squad? I mean, we don't know. Like, he might have it in his head. He's he is he is planning on rebuilding this team. He is planning on go again. He's just got a bit of an attitude where he don't really give a shit what's happening from now to the end of the season. Like, it might be that. Like you said, he might have given up on this season. He might be thinking, right, I'm going to do this, 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 this and this. I don't care about these first-teamers that are in there now because there's some big characters. And, and 
And it, it needs a shake up. If Fabinho is not his guy anymore and he doesn't like him, he's got to go. Do you know what I mean? You can't have those boys in the dressing room. They are poison. Them older senior heads that aren't on side, if they aren't on side, they've got to go. And we talk about the players that have to go because they're not good enough. Some of them characters have to go. Like, you've got to start looking at players like Joe Gomez and stuff who have not, they've been at the club a long time. Do you know what I mean? I know Joe Gomez is still around the age of, I think he's about 26, 20, 25, 26. Yeah, not even he's that. Joe Gomez. But, but he's been at the club a long time and he's not really cut it. Do you know what I mean? He gets shoe on out to right back sometimes, plays centre half, he doesn't always have the best game. Then he has the odd good game. He's not good enough. Like you said, Matic, Matic's ageing now. Van Dijk's in and out, but he's still probably your best centre half for me. Oh, I think Canate, I think Canate will be a good player for you, and your full backs are still good. But there's there's still there's still players there for either Klopp or another person that 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 can make a foundation out of. Like I said, you two full backs. Trent might need a little bit of competition, but I like Robertson a lot. I like. Um, Trent Alexander Arnold, I like Konate, your keeper's fine. Your front guys, when they're fit and firing, I mean, obviously, Gap Pope remains to be seen in terms of how he's going to fit into the side. But when, when your attackers are fit, you've got some good attacking options as well. So it's not all doom and gloom. It really isn't in terms of the squad. It really isn't. I'm, I'm not even joking when I say this, because obviously I banter, but I'm not joking. There is, there is attacking options there, and there's some good defensive options, and your goalkeepers are fine. Can you do me Obi a favour and tweet all that, please, Trav? Yeah, I would come on. It, but, <laughs> but I say this, like, I know I gas on the seats, but I, I'm being genuine. Like I've, I've never actually genuinely said your attack or your defence is terrible. I've always said the midfield for years. Even before I knew you, Obi, I said the midfield in the group chat to Scott was terrible. And at that time, Scott used to defend the midfield because it was decent back then. But now it's caught up with you and it, and it looks all over the place. And that's the main area of the pitch that you need to invest in. But I, I still... Go on, go on. I still think the, the, the one player that was in midfield, that you need, you need someone who's just going to do all of the crap work. And we've seen this where you bring in players like Thomas Partey, Arsenal, when he, he he's obviously doing a great job, and Casemiro at Man United to a lesser extent, because we kind of knew what what United were getting when they bought bought him. Yeah, yeah. But and and Rodri at City when City are on the straps, and that guy is absolutely vital. Now Liverpool don't have one; they actually don't have one anymore. And no, they yeah. don't because because when Alden was that guy and. I keep thinking back to the moment of the, the contract argument over when Aldum and then he went to PSG and it, it didn't go right for him. And it happens to a lot of players when they leave Liverpool, it doesn't go right for him. But he got a big contract, made a load of money and he, he almost cashed in on his career and moved on. For me, that that guy needed to be replaced and Thiago wasn't a replacement. Thiago was there before when Aldum left and he wasn't a direct replacement anyway. So it's like, get guys around Thiago who are going to do the job. You need a strong defensive midfielder and I back it again and I keep saying it, get Trent in the midfield because unlike you guys, I think Joe Gomez is a right back and he's always been a right back in my eyes. He just moved into the centre because he was over six foot and it's like, I never liked him at centre back but as a right back, I think he's very, very good. He's quick, he's strong. Um, he, he seems positionally more aware of right back He's a little bit more defensive than Trent, but saying that, probably every 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 uh, go back in the country is more defensive than Trent. And moving Trent in midfield might free him up, and then they need they need to buy a big player. So now Fernandez has gone to Chelsea. It's got to be Bellingham. But if you think about it, playing through what you've said, Trav, if you had a defence of Robertson, Van Dijk, Canate, um, and then put Gomez in there with Allison. And then put Trent, Thiago, and let's say Bellingham in midfield. And then with the firepower we've got, that's a very, very different team next season. And it's a very different team because the, the midfield will be re re energized. And that's what it needs more than anything else. But for me at the moment, the problem is deeper because the players aren't putting it in. And that that bothers me. And I'll be honest with you, it's, it's, 
it's getting to me. It's truly getting to me. But why like are said, they putting it in? What 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 do you think that factor is? What is the reason or reasons as to why why is there a disconnect with the performances in terms of effort? Why I, I don't know. I don't know because the effort was there's two things about the team before. There was the effort that they put in, the energy that they put in, and also that we had a team full of captains. Remember how much we talked about a team full of leaders. And it was true. You could see it. You could see it on the pitch. I don't see any leaders out there anymore. And I see people not putting it in. And it's like... Well, both there of them isn't any, that were, is there? Because Van Dyke's exactly. injured. Henderson has been out. Yeah, but, Milner's yeah, been out. Robertson's people got the, like, the armband. Yeah. But people like Robertson were being leaders. And we need to be more vocal. Sal is an actual leader. When he talks, you know what I mean? And he pushes it. And he pushes... And he's verbal when he's talking all the time. And it just bothers me. The, the two things that were unique about the team and why the team were having so much success against the money balls of like City and all of these teams like United and Arsenal were spending big season after season after season. And we were competing and we didn't always get the better of the city, but we're competing and beating the others. But we couldn't quite get to that pinnacle often enough simply because of City's money. But the, the difference was the effort and the leadership. And they're both missing. And that's not on anybody else other than the players on the pitch. Not because of City's money, OB. Because of City's cheating. Oh, <laughs> Which has come out in the last that. eight hours. Yeah, but yeah, but you know fine well, and I'm going to call this now, that it'll take three years for that case to go through. And there'll be all sorts of appeals and it'll end up paying yeah, it won't, whatever, it won't. whatever they need it'll to pay. It'll be a slap on the wrist. Yeah, it'll it'll be a is. slap on the wrist. Can, yeah, I just exactly. talk, can I just talk about then? Plot, which I which I like to talk about a lot, as you know. Really? But, <laughs> are, are you too genuinely happy with the decisions he's making in terms of the teams that he's picking, the substitutions that he's making, and everything like that? Are you still do you still are you still happy with that at the moment, Travis? Yeah. Let me try and explain it in a in a metaphor. Yeah. yeah. Jurgen Klopp won the Formula One championship. Mm-hmm. In a Subaru Impreza. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. It made no sense that he could drive a Subaru Impreza and beat Lewis Hamilton in an F1 car. No sense at all. And he did. Mm-hmm. And as it yeah. turns out, in the last eight hours, um, Lewis Hamilton fraudulently souped up his F1 car to beat Klopp even easier in his Subaru Impreza. Now, Jurgen Klopp now... It doesn't matter what kind of tyres he puts on the Subaru Impreza Turbo. He's not beating the Formula One car. Yeah? So when I talk about that metaphor of tyres on a Subaru Impreza, <clears throat> do you think Jurgen Klopp had it in his mind that James Milner would still be at the club now? Do you think if he had $100 million to buy Declan Rice, Naby Keita wouldn't have been moved on two years ago? Do you think if he had 100 million to buy Jude Bellingham now or last summer, Oxley Chamberlain wouldn't have been moved on? And they would have been moved on. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying. No, and I'm explaining. I'm explaining. No, I, I, to I now. get that. I get that from like a, from like a recruitment. He's standpoint. trying to make a purse out of a pig's ear. So I, I think, can't I judge just... any of his decisions on this. Agent I don't think he's been left it like that, though. I don't go, think go, right, I, I, right, what I'll do is I'll talk about, once again, go back to what I, I was quoting, right? So basically what them facts said was every single season where Klopp's had a full season, so the, he, he started in October and they finished eighth in that following yeah. season too, and he got to the um, UEFA Cup final, whatever it is, you know what I mean, Europa League or whatever it is called now. And then every full season he's had since then, He's been in the top four. Now, to turn the club round to that level says to me he's developed the team. He's also done little small rebuilds in there where he's added and he's decided that certain players aren't good enough and he's he picked out players and he's done little bits. But he's also done that under the restrictions of FSG. And I think, for me, it proves that he can do it. Now, I don't know where we'll finish this season. I don't think it'll be as low as 10. But the way things are going, it doesn't look very good. It really doesn't. Travis, it's like you being a Michelin star chef. 
and only having a cupboard full of pot noodles and then saying, <laughs> serving it to me, serving me the pot noodle <laughs> and being like, Scott, are you honestly happy with the Michelin star pot noodle, chicken and mushroom that I've just served you up? Is that going to see you through? I can't know if I can't know. <laughs> I'd be like, like right. Trav, you're a Michelin star chef, but you're, you've just served me a pot noodle. I'm not happy with you. You're a state. You're no good at your job. I'm not. Do you see look, how crazy look, that sounds? I'm not saying. I'm not. I, I can't like measure how much difference it would make. But for example, well, no one will know. No one will. Yeah, know, but ever. what I'm saying yeah. is, for, I'll give an FSG. example of what I mean. When he picks the team, Gakpo plays through the middle and Nunes plays on the left. Why is he doing that? I think his People head's just asking. gone, Trav. I think he's written the season off. Uh, I think Gakpo is even going to end up like Joel Linton and end up in midfield, try to get a song out of him like we did with Dirk Cow all them years ago. I just, I honestly think his head's just a bit gone and he's, you know, he's fell out with Fabinho, so bad set titch is in there, maybe before he's ready, but yeah. Uh, brought in Gapo. Right, so, yeah, so which... elaborate on that. So you're saying his head's gone. Where does he go from here? Mm. Do, you, do you think he's going to recover from this then and next season everything's going to be fine? Or what? No, Where, no. What's going to happen then? What under you... these... I've said it before. Under these owners, no. And he should walk. Can you leave? I don't, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't think anything. I'm just saying my opinion. I think he should walk. If we haven't got new owners, probably by the 1st of August. I think 1st of September's too late. I he w should walk with my blessing because we're on a hiding to nothing now. This net spend nonsense is, and the building the new stands for four hundred million to increase FSG's equity when they cash out and disappear with five billion across the pond. They've absolutely screwed Jurgen Klopp, screwed the fan base, screwed Liverpool Football Club. I right. don't know. It's an unknown. I agree, right. I agree with what you're saying, Scott. So you think he should walk if you don't get new owners, yeah? So then I'll move on to OB. So if you think he shouldn't walk, but you don't think you're going to get £200 million worth of investment or investment that's going to compete with the top clubs, do you think that's the reason why you can't compete with the top clubs? Or do you think you can compete with the top clubs without that budget? I don't know what he's going to get in the summer. I don't think he'll be massive, but he might get something in the summer, whether we've got new owners or not. I think they'll have to invest something because they'll have to appease. Um I've got this feeling that we've done a deal for somebody big and I, I think it might be Bellingham and I'm going to call that. But it's going to be difficult. But for me, right? So for me, yeah. I support Liverpool, right? And yeah. I back Jurgen Klopp. And I know what Scott's saying because Scott's a mega passionate fan and he can see that Jurgen isn't getting treated right. So for me, I'm, I've, my, my loyalty is the same, but it's slightly twisted towards Liverpool and thinking about the club, and me thinking, I'd rather we keep him, and he keeps working miracles. Do you know what I mean? Or do the best yeah. miracle that he can under the owners. That's why I'm I'm in a different place to Scott. Yeah. But I I understand what Scott's saying. Scott's looking at it from Jurgen Klopp's point of view. I'm looking at it from the club's point of view. I think the the, the club will not do any better without him. They'll do worse without him. A lot will depend on other clubs thing. as well, though, won't it? Yeah, it will. It will, but will attract players because we've got Jurgen Klopp will continue to happen, Scott. It will continue to happen no matter what. And I remember years where Ferguson went for a year or two where he won nothing. You know what I mean? And I remember it happening and he he, he just reinvented and come back. And that's what we need to hope happens. The only trouble is the investment is a little bit ropey. I don't know whether we're going to get the money put in. But from my, my perspective, we ain't going to do better without Jurgen Klopp. We're going to do worse. I'd rather Jurgen stayed um, I believe in what he's going to do. Now, whether we've got new owners or not, I think he'll be the best manager we can get with new owners and the best manager we can, we'll can we have, even if we have new owners. And that's you why... Know, you know what I actually find funny and ironic? That, that over all the debates we've had, your two's views on Clark have met in the middle in terms of what's going to pan out in the summer. Because when you think about it, Scott is saying, with these owners, we can't compete. Klopp should walk. OB saying, I want him to stay and carry on performing miracles. Now, it, what we can all agree on here is it, it's going to boil down to Klopp. Because the club aren't going to sack him because he performs miracles. And Klopp might be thinking, how many, years, how many more years can I keep performing miracles? 
So we don't know. That's what we're trying to say. Do, like, do, do, do you know what? Do you know what? No, Trav. I think yeah, he enjoys on. it. I think he enjoys the challenge. Because if you think about Jurgen Klopp, right? When well, he he's was, not going to enjoy it if he's let, 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 No, no, no. Right. Let, let's go back here, right? And let's get yeah. it right, right? Okay. So yeah. when he was at Dortmund, he was touted round as potentially going to certain clubs, right? And them clubs that were touted round were like the Barcelona, Man United. Yeah. And he, he was talked about in them sort of Bayern Munich, I think was the other one, right? So yeah. all of them clubs have got history of spending a lot more money than Liverpool. All of them clubs were in a better position than Liverpool were at that point. Yeah. Why did why did he join Liverpool, Trav? Because of the history. I think it was the passion. I think he saw something in the club that was a bit more passionate, yeah, a bit different. Yeah, and and he, he had, and if you look at the club that he'd come from, they were passionate support. They were it was a special place at home. Um, there was a real connect between the club supporters and the and the and and the, the, the whole entity of, of the city. And I think that's what he saw and that's what he liked. Yeah. Um I think he likes the challenge. And that's what that's what I get from it as well. He loves the challenge. And I think he will respond in a very fresh way to it eventually. Now, that might mean he's in the mud, to quote Scott, for the rest of the season. It might mean he's up against it for the rest of the season. It might mean that it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of work. But I think he'll relish the challenge and he'll find a solution. Because ultimately, he's, he's a fantastic coach and he finds solutions. And he always talks about finding solutions. And eventually he's going to find them, and, and and he's going to do he's going to do a lot better than he's doing now. Whether whether that means it's enough for us to win the league or not, or come back and suddenly blow everybody away like we did for sort of a couple of years where we were absolutely fantastic, who knows? But I do think we'll respond. I don't think he'll continue to allow so Scotty, players. To Scotty not... thinks Scotty thinks that solution cannot come without a big spend. Do you think it can? Um. Under Klopp, it could, but but it's 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 harder. It's yeah, harder for it, it to is. happen. Look, Klopp but, could... but, but but just be clear, it's not impossible. Yeah, because he's he's gone and picked out players before that other clubs would not have touched and made them in absolute superstars. You know what I mean? So Salah was a failure at Chelsea. He went away. He did all right at Florentino. He did all right at Roma. Bang! Klopp was like, "He's my man. I want that guy." I didn't. I didn't see what he was buying. I don't know about you boys. I knew he was buying a decent player, and I think I said to Scott at the time. I know he. I, I think he's decent. He's doing well over in Italy. I was watching a lot of Italian football at the time. But I don't know if no I think he's too lightweight. He yeah, one. yeah. But that guy saw that and the ability to pick out somebody who is, who's had a chance. You think, right? Okay, I'm going to pick him out. He's going to become world class. Now, there's not too many other managers do that. Pick out a player and make them into go. That's my guy. Van Dyke, he's done the same. Allison was probably getting there already, if I'm being totally candid. Gini Wijnaldum, he moved Firmino into an unknown role. And that sort of passion and that sort of ability to go, right, okay, I'm going to change this and I'm going to make this different and create something, I think is his passion. And I think he can do it again. And I believe he will. I really do. And again, like I was just trying to say there, the anything can happen in football. It can turn around quick. Who's to say that Liverpool don't sign a Matoma for two and a half million pound? I cannot believe he costs two and a half million pound. There's mm. there's little nuggets out there. There's little pieces of gold to be unearthed. Um, but yeah, it's frustrating that every player that Liverpool are linked with, no player is under a million, a hundred million pound now. No player. As soon as you link him, it's a hundred million pound. Your your bang for your buck isn't That's going very deal, far man. anymore. So, yeah, we, we need the transfer committee, whatever they're called these days, the sporting director, to get into overdrive and find these these little nuggets. Another Andy Robertson, uh, another Joe Gomez even. I know you said, oh, why didn't you push, uh, punt him on? But I wouldn't. He's fourth choice centre-back, second choice right-back. He's a great squaddy for me. Um, but on the other hand, if we're still under FSG, we probably do have to sell to buy. And that's the sad thing about it. We might have to sell a, a Joe Gomez and a Nat Phillips. Um, maybe punt Carvalho on for 15, 20 million just to balance the books and give us a bit of money. And that's the sad reality of life under FSG. And I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope they're going to somehow spring a bit of a surprise that 
they've pulled 150 to 200 million to have Bellingham and another and then have the lads back from injury to make it look like what healthy squad again but and I know I've said it to you boys before but I am absolutely certain that Luis Diaz is getting punted on in the summer for 120 million to buy Jude Bellingham but that's probably for another poddy we've barely even spoke about Wolves fair play to Wolves they I said it in a previous poddy any team we play at the minute looks like Brazil they they were fantastic mm. uh, Brighton are fantastic and that's the thing it's not even about Liverpool can he get us back near the top of the league you don't know if Arsenal are going to drop off you don't know if Man United are going to spend another 200 million and push on up the league you don't know if Pep Guardiola who is in all intents and purposes this season he's throwing the league he's handing it to Arteta when you look at their bench arguably two of the best three centre-backs in the league were on the bench for them Laporte and Diaz. Why are they on the bench? Akanji and Ake starting. He lets Jao Cancelo leave on loan when he's already sold Zinchenko. He's got a, a young lad at left back. Um, yeah. He's got Jack Grealish, which kind of following on from Jamie Carragher and his nonsensical comment mm-hmm. yesterday. They've spent £100 million on Jack Grealish and he's crap. He's made no impact whatsoever at Man City. He wouldn't be playing if Man City were, were fit. And... You know, but they can just absorb a hundred million pound mistake. ADB was on the bench as well. Kevin De Bruyne is on the bench. What on earth is going on there? I seen a tweet saying he's leaving it in the summer. Was that just a rumor? And I looked on Sky Sports. I couldn't see it. Apparently, he said he's leaving in the summer. Um, you got never Riyad Mahrez. What's that? With Pep. You never know with Pep, mate. But that's the thing. It's Pep is throwing it for his mate Arteta, and I can't see. It. I think he's committing a bit of shit houseery, to be honest. I think he's seen Liverpool fall off. And seeing that we've been going at it, hammering tongs the last five years, I think I'm going to compound your misery by f- making our side fall off. Oh, Obi's I'm, 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 I'm not having that. I'm I don't get that. any of his team selections, Obi. We sent a potty two no, or three bodies ago. No, and, I don't and, even and know think, his starting 11 anymore. The guy is a mess. He's throwing it. <laughs> I, think, I think there must be something going on with some of the injuries there. Or... Um, maybe it's the impact of the World Cup. They had a lot of players in the World Cup and maybe maybe there's guys who have been carrying stuff since then. Um, it's hard to tell because everything's become a mishmash since the World Cup. I don't know if you've noticed, but obviously Liverpool have been absolutely diabolical, but other clubs, there's inconsistent results coming in all over the place. And mm. we talked about the impact of the World Cup. And I know we're sitting in February and the World Cup finished just before Christmas, but... It's there. I can feel it. You can see it. Random results are coming on all over the place, out of nowhere. And it's like there's a lot of players who have dropped off heavily since they come back. Quite a few Argentinians as well. If you look at the, the Aston Villa goalkeeper, he looks awful. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, where's that come from? It's because they're not on the game. And yeah. I'm wondering if a few of these players just aren't quite right. After yeah, that being Man away, City. Coming back. Who's the Man City striker? Julian Alvarez, is it? Yeah, yeah. You barely heard his name since the World Cup, and he exactly. came back with his reputation enhanced tenfold. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's also had an impact on a lot of the players who were flying before the World Cup and had to stop because they, they a lot of them have come back and not quite looked match fit. If I'm being totally honest, and it's happened to a lot of different clubs. Some of the clubs have managed it better than others. I think. I think Arsenal managed it quite well. I do think United have done well off the back of it, and they seem to be quite set and in in, he's obviously got them to the right level of fitness and kept them there, maintained it. Mm. But there, there's a lot of teams who seem to have sporadic choices um, going on of who's starting the games. And I think some of it's to do with either fitness levels or players' heads just not being there. Yeah. Lads, that's been nearly an hour. Varying opinions. I'm happy we made it to an hour. All three of us are still best mates. I need an ice bath after that. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> right, listen. If you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe. I can guarantee there's going to be another onto the ball episode now that we've made it for an hour and all three of us still like each other and like doing this podcast. So that's great. So I'm going to end it right now saying goodbye to Trav and Obi and FSG out.